way of knockout, he is the undefeated IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael Second to None. Referee in charge now to give instructions, Bill's Lane. All right, now, you've already gone through the instruction in the dressing room one time. Any questions from the challenger's corner? No, Any questions from the champion's corner? Let's get it on. Come on. And so we are set to go for the IBF middleweight championship. That man's the champion, Michael Nunn, taking on Marlon Starling, the welterweight champion, moving up. Neither man has fought recently. August of 89, when he beat Iran Barkley, at Michael Nunn's last fight, and for Starling, September 15th, 1989, when he took on Young Kyo Chung. Nunn, the 27-year-old fancy boxer who sometimes doesn't box, and right now you see he's not moving very much. You see Nunn holding behind the head something that the Starling people were very concerned about Mills Lane letting happen. Well, we've had three breaks. We had two breaks in all the cases already, Al. Grab him behind the head, hitting on the break. So it's going to be that kind of a fight all night long. And already Mills Lane talking to the two fighters. And there's a history with him and Starling. Didn't he do the Breland-Starling fight number two in which there was constant warnings being given out? Surely, and he did it all night long. And I think he did a, a fight with, uh, what do you say, none. So we had the same kind of problem with none. Look at Michael Nunn. Well, we've seen this before from him. We saw it against Juan Roldan, where he just kind of stands there, lets the man punch, doesn't worry about it, and then eventually starts throwing his own punches. It is misleading to think that Nunn can't fight on the inside. He's done so before. Starling, of course, noted for the great defense. And blocks two shots by Nunn. Nunn with the uppercut that gets through. Nunn pawing with the left hand. Nunn looks so much bigger than Starling. But the, the bigness is, is being nullified if he does the kind of things he's doing. Laying on the road, pick a bird. Uh, he's not doing the right things in there. Not at all. Well, we have to note that also Starling has never fought more, at more than 149 pounds, and he weighed in at 158. He carries the weight real well, though. He really doesn't look like a puffed up welterweight. No, he, he doesn't look like he's carrying the weight fairly well. At the voice of Buster Douglas, James Buster Douglas, the heavyweight champion of the world. I'm Al Bernstein along with Angelo Dundee. Just delighted you're with us wherever you're watching in this IBF middleweight championship. And so far, early in the first round, though they have not hurt none, Starling has been able to get the right hand in. He's getting in quite a few points. He also stepped on Nunn's foot when he was coming in. Just as you predicted he might. Nunn slapping with those punches, nothing too dramatic there. And the Starling defense is, at least at this moment, making it difficult for Nunn to land. Nunn smiling at Starling, taking some shots and smiling. I think that would be a factor with an uh, inexperienced fighter. Well, the Starling will have no effect on him at all. Well, the reaction Mar on his punches. Well, that's a good point, Buster. And if Marlon Starling needed a confidence builder, he's probably gotten it here in the first round. Hasn't taken any big from none, and probably went ahead and won the first round. Fascinating as we go into Michael Nunn's corner. What voice will be heard? I'm with the first two. Joe Goosen. I don't mind you doing the shooting yourself. Just keep hitting the body more. Okay. Just be aware on the inside. Michael, this guy a piece of paper one on the inside. Okay. You stay on the inside, keep dominating. Use the jab from the outside a little bit. Okay. Hey, pretty much you're doing what you want to do with the guy. Just don't get lazy. Okay. Don't let him get that's Freddie Roach and Marlon Starling. More things out there that make the right hand work a little easier. Okay? And the jab work a little And as we look at Marlon Starling, there, there's Michael Nunn. Starling did tell us uh, when we talked to him yesterday that he thought after the first round, as he did against Floyd Hunnigan, he'd know what he's facing in Michael Nunn. He must be feeling pretty good going into the second round now. 
We're into round two. Michael Nunn on the right of your screen in the white trunks, the much taller of the two, defending his middleweight crown against Marlon Starling. Here at the Mirage in Las Vegas. We had this weigh in early this morning, and don't you know that Nunn came in two pounds heavy? I had to go out and take off two pounds. So this might have a play with this because he should have made the weight very simple if he did it the right way. Well, and remember, we will point out again, two weeks before the fight, he bolted the 10 Goose training camp working with Joe Goose and went to work with Cassius Bull Green, who is a trainer from the West Coast, uh, not a well-known one, but one that none shows. And uh, only now, today, did he reunite with Joe Goose as his trainer. So whether his last two weeks in training were what he wanted to remains to be seen. Some evidence it might not have been because of having to lose the weight. Now, none is starting to set down his punches a little more. He's starting to pick it up. Now, there's none as a righty. Now, I have had a theory all the way in his career that he's great as a right-hander, just doesn't use that style very often. I've seen him in the gym as a right-hander be excellent. He doesn't do it as a, in the fight. And he switches back to lefty very quickly. I think sometimes when the fighter uses that, try to use that to his advantage, but in, in, in most cases, I think it's to the fighter's disadvantage as try to switch back and forth. Starling with a good right hand, but the uppercut from Nunn gets there. And make no mistake, that uppercut was felt by Marlon Starling. He felt that uppercut. Great punch. He may be drawing at Nunn, but he got hit with the uppercut. And now Starling lands his own good right hand. We're having a good clash of heads in there right now. There's no question in my mind. We talked to him uh, yesterday when we did Buster. Starling didn't think the uppercut would be a factor by none. I think it will. I think he's got one of the best in boxing. Yeah, it's going to bring that head up. It's going to bring him down from that cross. Bring him up out of that cross. But no, he also has to come back with that right, with that left hand. We're into round two, and the lead right continuing to get there by Marlon Starling. Another right a little low by Starling. It's the hand speed of none. She's noted for. Starling with that peekaboo defense. He's noted for that. And he makes it work. Half a minute left to go in round two. Scheduled for 12. Notice Michael's loading up on that left hand. Looking to do what to Starling when he did the time with Columbay. And there he took a step to the right, which was the way he landed the punch against Columbay. Warning to none by Mills Lane for put, putting his hand on the head of Marlon Starling. Some action after the bell. You get the feeling this one is heating up. We peek into the corner of Marlon Starling. That's Freddie Roach. You're gonna get busier out there, okay? You let this guy take the action away from you, okay? You're gonna be busier, all right? Pace up. You can't keep rounds away. Let's win them all, okay? All right? A little lazy that round, okay? Yeah. More punches, okay? Uh -huh. You don't have to be real tight out there. Just there's, there's a lot of snap in your punch, okay? Quick. Just a little bit. I think when you bump head, And Michael Nunn's really cool. corner. Keep using that jab, though, Michael. You keep it from the outside. Use the jab, slide the uppercut. That's what's working from the outside. On the, you know, let me keep it on here. On the inside, Mike, body and pivot around him. You can't play, baby. That's right. Oh, this is it. Swelling over the right eye already of Michael Nunn, and as Joe Goosen said, from a clash of heads, perhaps, on the inside. We're into round three. I'd also like to note that Stone has never fought an opponent over 252 pounds. It's going to be interesting in later, later rounds. Indeed it will be. We're told that uh, Michael Nunn has landed only 19% of his punches from those people uh, with the punch company box uh, group. And that's not great. Michael with his head in there. Yeah, my, yeah Nunn's coming in there with his head. And, and what's happening is bringing his own head down. But I think he's going to run, run into Starling's head. Now there's what Marlon Starling gives you trouble with, right? He gives you that peekaboo defense you talked about, it, Ange, and he's tough to hit. And then he comes out with the right hand.